friends so today we would be going over uh, our our topic for today that is core motion so we would be going over three main uh, three main hardwares accelerometer accelerometer it's gyroscope and a uh, magnometer so this accelerometer stands for uh, how uh, how fast your speed is changing or or how is the acceleration changing so this gives you your acceleration gyroscope gives you the rotation of your phone how fast is your phone rotating a magnometer gives you the uh, the point of direction of the north where is your uh, where is the phone pointing right now towards the north so these are the three main hardwares inside your iPhones that can be accessed by using the core motion framework. Now how do we do it? So we have to first import this binary as usual and this is the main class that we have to instantiate CM motion device, uh, CM motion manager. So CM motion manager is the is the main class is the main uh, is the main class that handles all of these all of these uh, hardwares. So you have to first instantiate this class and make sure one thing that CM motion manager is actually a, a singleton class. So it has to be made as a property or it has to be declared in as a as a global uh, as a global variable. So you can't make it of type local variable. It's a global resource. So you can't instantiate it again and again. Okay. So let's get started. Let's make a new project. Commotion. Uh, okay, now you can now let's import the framework. And over here, import this framework. Core motion dot h. Okay. Now inside my this class, always have your try to have your code and the view did appear. Okay. Uh, and now we have to instantiate this class. CM motion manager. CM motion manager Alec in it. Now we go inside this class and then we see the properties of it. It has the time interval. So after how much time should this so let's first like make it of type accelerometer. And now let's make it and one more thing guys, so this uh, so this core motion can be only be accessed by using an actual device. You cannot use a simulator for it. Accelerometer available. So the getter is for is exometer available, is exometer active, exometer data, start exometer updates or start updates updates to queue. So this is just a method like to get just a single value, and this is to uh, like to get it in a queue. So basically, it is a queue first in first out. So you can keep on accumulating data. This is this is not one time. So this can go for longer time you want. So you set the time. Accelerometer. Updates. Update equals to zero point one. Okay, now you check whether the data is. extra major available then you do the start extra meter updates the queue now you make it a new queue operation queue alec so you instantiate a new queue 
and then with handler so basically this is your uh, you are saying that start updating my data for the extra meter and then send it to this queue this a new queue that we just made so what happens so the background queue in the background this queue will be always be called and be running as long as you want it and this is a block that I'm assigning to this queue so I'm getting an input to this block which is an error and which is a, the data so I'm getting of type let's remove the nullable thing okay This is also TFC thing, so we have to do this part. And now once we are inside this block, now we have these two, two input data and error, so we can just print it out. We can say extra meter. This is the data. We're gonna use printed F. So we're gonna now go inside this class. This is the assumption data, and this has a property of acceleration. And so I go inside this class. Acceleration has three x, y, and z. So you can see in all the axes. So let's first print out this uh, acceleration. Mm. acceleration okay because this is a class you can't print out a class uh, you can't print out instance of a class we have to print out a property of an instance your property uh, let's just try to print it out let's see so I'm so I'm running it on my phone you can't see my phone cell phone right now uh, running code Okay, it's running on the same way that now. There's one on the phone. Okay, so it's not working, right? Any anybody knows why? I told you before because this has to be uh Melting glass, right? So we have to do this part. Bad access, okay. Yeah, because this this one is a struct, right? So we have to print out one inside it. Because this is a C API. And you have to like print out the one that you're looking for. So see. So it's working. You're getting your access because no. And guys, so so now when I make it upside down my phone, you can see a negative x. No, that's x. Okay. So the x. So right now my phone is not. Now I move my phone, so you can see the variation. Okay. That's how also you can you can see like whether the phone is upside down or not. So when you print out the z, and you see a positive value, that means the phone is upside down. And when you see a negative value. That means your phone is up. So right now, see a positive value. Well, that's my phone is upside down. Okay, when I so now it is negative. So my phone is straight up because you're working against the gravity and you're working with the gravity. 
so like this you can print out all your stuff like y z whatever you feel like okay and now we can do the same thing for our different these are the same properties you can also stop it afterwards and then you can use the same code literally the same code for different things mm. now the code will be the same from over here only the class will be changed so it's not so so now we are working for gyroscope is gyro available gyro update interval inside this class gyro data and let's see what is in there this is a rotation rate the rotation rate is x y and z okay. so now we can print out this so it is the same thing and now we comment out this part so you can see the rotation x now I move my phone so you can see the rotation in x axis y axis z axis and guys you know, all know so your x axis is the one towards the right y is towards the front and z is, is from top to bottom now let's use the same thing for a magnometer available Let's go inside this class magnetometer. We have the magnetic field of the X, Y, and Z. Okay, so let's print out. So now you can see the values in X, Y, and Z. Basically, so your x, y, and z is basically how far they are from the x axis, y axis, z axis.
magnetic field is basically giving you the magnetic field in the x axis, y axis and the z axis. This is the use of the uh, magnetometer to give you the magnetic field. So using these classes you can also make it a metal detector, your phone. So the so the place below your camera that can be used to detect metals or all like steels or something by so by looking at the magnetic field in the x y and z axis so thank you guys so that's all for today like for the uh, core motion see you next time uh, with new updates so till then if you if you like my uh, videos please subscribe to my channel down below thank you